Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in to South Florida Sunday again today, hopefully again today, with me, Marion Dozier of TYSmedia.net, and TYS, that stands for Tell Your Story, and I probably do not have to mention CocoWire.net, that is a, that is a new member of the TYS Media team, we'll talk about that later. Um, but anyway, today on South Florida Sunday, we don't have a guest. What we do have is multiple guests. Well, they're not guests. They're events. Lots of events across Palm Beach County and South Florida. And these are all events that would interest communities of color. So get your pens and paper out, ladies and gentlemen, or you can visit our new community news website, CocoWire.net, from which we gathered all of these events today to share with you on South Florida Sunday. Now, as you may recall, CocoWire.net, which is C-O-C-O-Wire.net, is a website with super local news, events, and useful information for, by, or about communities of color, primarily in Palm Beach County. And those communities of color... They are African-Americans, Caribbean Blacks, and Native Africans. And you'll find events targeting this population on our calendar. Just visit the website and click on Calendar or listen now closely and write it down. All right, so I'm just going to go through a list I um. Uh, and read them out separately. And again, if you have any, you know, if you have any questions, just visit CocoWire.net. First guest, first event, the Tiki Market. The Tiki Market is here every Sunday and very live. It is a unique Caribbean-inspired outdoor market that is open every Sunday from 4 to 7 p.m., along the waterfront plaza at the Riviera Beach Mar- uh, Marina Village. It is a really authentic celebration of the city's cultural and historical connections to the Caribbean islands, especially the Bahamas, and has some really cool vendors. If you're interested perhaps in being a vendor, and you don't have to be selling Caribbean things, but I think that's the preference, but the fee is just $20 per week. You can pay per week, you can pay per month, um, but visit their website, Tiki Market RB, as in Riviera Beach, dot com for more information or call 561-352-6626. And ladies and gentlemen, there is also a Caribbean marketplace, by the way, every Saturday at Little Haiti Cultural Complex in Miami. Vendor spaces there are twenty dollars a week, um, and, fe- and there it definitely features the food, the music, and the people of the entire Caribbean. Those events are held, you know, as I said, every Saturday from ten to four. Um, and if you want more information, visit their website at littlehaiticulturalcenter dot com or call three zero five nine six zero. Two nine six nine, and it's a really cool place. I went down there a few months ago to check it out before I added it to Cocoa Wire, and I was really impressed. Um, that um, Little Haiti Cultural Complex is a huge place. It was created by the city of Miami to recognize and celebrate the growing Haitian community down there um, in in Dade County. Um, and what was really kind of interesting to me is that even though it's in Little Haiti, most of the vendors who were there, most of the performers who were there, most of the people who were there were of Jamaican descent, which I thought was interesting. You know, I never did find out why that was, and I don't know if it was just that day. But interestingly, I also met while I was there a vendor who was from Lake Worth. She would drive down there every Saturday to participate, and she's an African-American woman. But um, it's a really interesting place. So even if you don't want to be a vendor, just go down there and check it out. If you just happen to be in Miami between, you know, 10 and 4, 
on uh, Saturdays. And you can find out more on their website, littlehaiticulturalcenter.com. And there's, you know, lots of information even about the, the history of, of Haiti, too. Now, yesterday, Saturday, January 26th, launched the 30th annual Zora Festival. As in the internationally known writer Zora Neale Hurston, who was born in 1921 in Eatonville, Florida, and she died in 1960 in Fort Pierce, Florida. In other words, she is Florida. The Zora Festival, a.k.a. the Zora Neale Hurston Festival of the Arts and Humanities, runs through February 3rd, 2019 in her hometown of Eatonville, which is just about 10 miles north of Orlando. So it's not super far away. But the festival is a multidisciplinary, multi-generational event with public discussions, museum ex- exhibitions, theatrical productions, arts education programming, and a three-day outdoor festival of the arts. But mostly... This festival is a celebration of Eatonville's most famous daughter. And I don't know if y'all know this, by the way, but Eatonville was the first all-black city in Florida. Just FYI. Anyway, she was in her 30s when she moved to New York in 1925 and became a well-known part of the storied Harlem Renaissance. Her career climaxed in 1937 with the publication of Their Eyes Were Watching God, a swirling tale of a woman's journey to independence that climaxed with the storied but true storm of 1928, which touched down and affected all of Palm Beach County, but was particularly damaging in the Western communities that include Belle Glade and South Bay. And those of you who live here in West Palm Beach may also know that more than 600 black bodies more than 600 of black bodies from the Glades area were dumped unceremoniously into what was then known as the, quote, Poppers Cemetery, end quote, located at 25th Street and Tamron Avenue in West Palm. There is indeed now a Storm of 28 Memorial in that location. So, and I actually wrote about that. I did a front page story back in, I think, two thousand and two or three when I was at the Sun Sentinel um, when they were just um, the Storm of 28 Memorial um, Coalition was just kind of getting started on it. But anyway, back to the Zora Festival. If you're interested in going with a group from the West Palm Beach area, then you can join the Martin Luther King Coordinating Committee on its annual bus trip north to the festival. The bus will leave West Palm Beach at 7 a.m. next week, Saturday, February the 2nd, and return that night. The tickets for the bus trip, which includes the bus fare and festival entry fee, are $75 per adult and $45 for students. For more information, you can visit their website. uh, Oh, my God. I didn't write the festival name down. I'm sorry. You're going to have to visit the Cocoa Wire site for that. (laughs) Or you can call 561-832-4682 or 561-833-9814. Those are numbers if you're interested in joining the Martin Luther King Coordinating Committee on the bus trip. Um, but if you want to learn more about the Zora Festival, unfortunately, you're going to have to go onto the CocoaWire.net site, the calendar, and then click on one of those um, calendar uh, events uh, for the Zora Neil, uh, so for the Zora Festival. Now, I apologize for that, ladies and gentlemen. I forgot to write that down. All right. And then next event, next guest, 7 p.m., February 1st. The We Shall Overcome, a celebration of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. will occur at the Kravis Center of the Performing Arts in West Palm Beach. It's an annual event hosted by the Kravis Center's Community Relations Committee, which focuses on doing like, you know, community outreach and events that um, 
essentially are for people of color, really. This year, the main performer will be Damien Sneed, a nationally known and really accomplished vocalist, multi-instrumentalist, and Carnegie Hall veteran. Uh, And he will be paying tribute to our iconic civil rights leader through the performance of classical, jazz, and gospel music. Um, Joining him will be the local Ebony Corral of the Palm Beaches under the direction of Dr. Orville Lawton, uh, which will also uh, perform. To learn more about the talented Mr. Sneed, who has played with some of the biggest names in music from Aretha Franklin to my personal favorite, Ashford and Simpson, visit his website, DamienSneed.com, which is spelled D A M I E N, like Nancy, S N, like Nancy, E E D David.com. DamienSneed.com and about the if you want to know more about the Ebony Corral, visit its website, Ebony Corral of the Palm Beaches.com. And of course, remember that Corral has an E on the end of it. The ticket prices range from $15 to $75. And to register for the event and get tickets, visit the Kravis Center's website at Kravis.org. Once again, the celebration, the musical celebration of Dr. Uh, Martin Luther King will be held at 7 p.m. on Friday, February the 1st. Now, also at the Kravis Center in West Palm Beach is another annual event specifically for communities of color. The annual African-American Film Festival, which features movies by and about African-Americans. This year, there are three movies in the series. 1999's Their Eyes Were Watching God will play um, on February the 4th. Sparkle, which was done in 1976, will play on February the 11th. And The Long Walk Home, which was done in 1990, will play on February 18th. Each of these movies were huge when they were released and each will be shown at the Kravis Center's Marshall Rinker Playhouse. Individual movie tickets are $12, but for the entire three movie series, just $30. For more information and tickets, again, visit the Kravis Center's website at kravis.org. And also coming up at the Kravis, which you will find on cocoawire.net. Do I keep saying that? Um, Johnny Mathis is performing on January 29th. The Four Tops and The Temptations are performing on February 2nd. And Patti LaBelle is performing on February the 6th. Wow. And to think, I used to really hate on the Kravis because I felt like they were ignoring our interests. But, you know, that's changed clearly. You know, and if you go on their website and check it out, you'd be amazed as I was. Another place uh, where there is interesting events for our communities is the Norton Museum of Art, also in West Palm Beach. Um, And the Norton just underwent a multi-million dollar expansion and renovation. And it's been closed for a while. Um, But it's going to be reopening again on February 9th. And one of the first events on their calendar is is the museum's second annual Black History Family Day on February 23rd. Um, it, that event, it's, gonna, it's an all-day event from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. on February 23rd, um, and it celebrates the art and cultural histories of Floridians of African descent, which is really cool. It also highlights the museum's collection of work by artists from across the African diaspora with um, specialized tours at the that day, family workshops, talks, and a teen art studio, all free and all open to the public. Through film, photography, and performances, this Black History Family Day will illuminate the black communities that call Florida home and the program includes, here's a couple of highlights. 
um, this Miami-based Caribbean artist collective called Third Horizon um, will curate a selection of Caribbean and African film shorts followed by conversations with the directors who are going to be there on site for the event. There also is going to be the Black Florida Project, a photographic display of black rural towns and inner cities throughout Florida. And to mark the centennial of the Negro National Anthem, which is, what is it, ladies and gentlemen? Lift every voice and sing. Um, To commemorate the centennial of that song and the song's writer, James Weldon Johnson, there will be poets and vocal performances there um, that day. Very cool. So visit the Norton Museum of Arts website at norton.org for more information. Once again, the event is free and open to the public and will be held from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. on Saturday, February 23rd. Our next guest, You Don't Know My Story. You Don't Know My Story. That is the name of this year's annual Glades Community Service Awards, which will be held from 7 to 9 p.m. at, (laughs) guess where, Coco's Banquet Hall in Pahokee. Y'all cannot imagine how I just whooped when I saw that. I've got to go visit that place, Coco's Banquet Hall in Pahokee. The event is organized and sponsored by Thrive for a Change of the Palm Beaches, a grassroots ex-felon reentry program. And the founder, uh, Tyron Hanna, has been on South Florida Sunday before. But now in his sixth year, Thrive works to help ex-felons with housing, employment, community service, even driver's license restoration so that they can return home successfully. This event is a fundraiser for the nonprofit uh, that was born in the Glades, just like its founder, Mr. Hanna. Keynote speaker is Sylvia Sharps, who is the education director at the Salvation Army Northwest Community Center in West Palm Beach. And the hostess is Kenya Wheeler, CEO of GT Productions, which is here in West Palm Beach as well. Tickets are $55 and can be purchased via PayPal online. For more information and for tickets, you can call Mr. Hanna as well at 561-334-8609. So those are some events, and I have a few more. But I, you know, I I should have, I should have mentioned, well, that's okay. Um, Let me tell you about uh, another event, which is backed by popular demand. And it is a Cooler Fest related event from 12 noon to 7 p.m. on February the 3rd, which is next Sunday, will be the Sands Caribbean Music Festival in Fort Lauderdale. Now, Sands originated in Jamaica and is now in several states, including ours. Um, And the kind of party that it is, is a very typically Jamaican party where you can bring a cooler filled with your own beverages, whether non-alcoholic or alcoholic, Um, bring your own ice, bring your chasers, bring your soda, whatever, roll that into the concert, and you sit there and you have your fun. Um, And it is, it's, you know, there is there's some other Cooler Fest related events here in Florida. Like they have a big one down in um, Miami. And then we have one that has been happening here in Palm Beach County for the last five years. Um, and that one has it's been in um, it's been in Lake Worth. It's been in Green Acres. But for the last couple of years, it has been in Riviera Beach at Bicentennial Park. And that's how I know how these Cooler Fest parties work because you literally do bring your own drinks. And it's really fun. At the Cooler Fest that happens in our area, not only can you bring your own drinks, but you can bring your own tents and tables and whatever else and just set up and have your own party. And I actually went um, 
the last one he held a few months ago, um, I went and was just astounded. And it was like, it was just like a big, you know, a whole bunch of little parties mixing up into one big party. But anyway, I'm getting our point. Sands Caribbean Music Festival will be in Fort Lauderdale. You can bring your, you know, your own cooler. It, it, apparently, the this particular cooler fest has really high energy and really good vibes. It's an all day party, just from twelve noon to seven p.m. But get ready to party, as they say. Early tickets are thirty to sixty dollars and are only sold until January thirty first. The higher price ticket, of course, is VIP. Um, but um, after January 31st, I guess the prices must go up for those. Or maybe they stopped selling them, period, January 31st, because the event is on February 3rd. But for more information, visit eventbrite.com and type in Sands Festival. And Sands is spelled S-A-N-D-Z festival.com <laughs> not dot com just sans festival on eventbrite.com and then there is one last event and I really like this event I like the people who host it and if I am honest and truthful it is through this event that I got the idea for the name of my website because the name of this event is Africoco. Have you ever heard about it? It is a one-of-its-kind networking experience that celebrates the people, the food, and the music of the African diaspora. It happens every month on the last Friday uh, of each month in different locations around South Florida. But for the last few months, it has posted up at Sketch Lounge on Clematis Street in West Palm Beach in downtown West Palm. The most recent one was just held this past Friday. The next one is scheduled for February 22nd. The tickets are $10 each, but to get in free before 11, you just have to visit Eventbrite and register. The event is from like... 8 to 3 a.m. or something. I know it ends at 3. I can't remember when it start started. But I know when I went before, <laughs> we got there, you know, toward the beginning, like around 10. And if y'all know Caribbean people and African people, they tend to start to, you know, they come a little later and party later. So I don't remember the time it starts, but I know it ends at 3. Anyway, so keep it in mind, it's really fun, and, re and it really is a very diverse, very Afrocentric event. Visit its website, africoco.us, as in us, to learn more and even to buy one of their really cool new T-shirts. Um, I don't have one, but I saw them on the website, and they're, what's nice about them is that they're shaped, and then they have... <laughs> they have... Um, uh, what is the word? Well, they have Africoco written across the front, but um, you can see those on the website. Um, and the website is Africoco, A F R I C O C O dot U S. As I love to say, go Coco. And I did get the idea from them um, for the name of my website. So that is my list of events for today, um, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Um, I did not mention um, the original host on this show, who remains the original host on this show, um, Thomas Masters, a.k.a. Riviera Beach Mayor Thomas A. Masters, who um, is not on the show right now because he is running – for re-election, um, for his historic re-election. Um, I think this will be his sixth term if he wins, and he will be the longest-serving mayor in the city of Riviera Beach. Um, well, and that reminds me of another event that's coming up. Um, the Riviera Beach mayoral debate um, is going to be held on January 31st, 
in the city council chambers at City Hall. It's going to be held from 6 to 8 p.m. on January 31st, and it is organized by residents for residents. Um, All the questions are coming from residents. Um, The people who are going to be asking questions are going to be residents, from what I understand. And the lead organizer is a 50-year resident named Claudius Knowles. Um, And um, apparently four of the five registered candidates are going to be um, participating. And those candidates are Thomas Masters, the incumbent, Ronnie Felder, who is the CEO of J Outreach Ministries in Riviera Beach, Um, Cedric Thomas, who is a former uh, Riviera Beach City Councilman and a former City of Riviera Beach police officer, and John Lee Williams, who is the former longtime executive director of Riviera Beach's Department of Parks and Recreation. Those are the four participating candidates. The other candidate um, is Arthur Morrison, who is a former U.S. uh, military, I'm sorry, not former. He is a U.S. military veteran and a former longtime educator. Um, And he also ran for county commission last time, but he has not uh, yet said that he is going to participate. So that event is coming up on January 31st. Um, And... So if you're interested in Riviera Beach or you live in Riviera Beach, that would be a really good place to be uh, on January 31st. And if you have any questions or would like to ask questions of the uh, candidates, you can send an email to Mr. Knowles at RivieraBeachDebate at gmail.com. All right. And so on that note, ladies and gentlemen, I will end the show today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Uh, It's Marion Dozier of TYSmedia.net. And if I had not said this before, and I think I have, but, you know, it's really important to me that y'all visit CocoaWire.net because I created that site specifically for us as a former longtime newspaper reporter, when I moved back home about, I don't know, it's nine or 10 years ago, you know, I noticed that the mainstream media wasn't really covering our communities. Um, and it really disappointed me. And I used to try to explain it away based upon my experience in the field when people would tell me about it. And I would always say, oh, well, you know, the industry is changing, you know, the number of, of, you know, people who subscribe to the paper, for example, um, you know, has gone down, you know, and there are other reasons as well. But the longer I've lived here and the more reporters I know and, the, you know, I read all read the papers and watch TV, it seems like if we don't commit a crime or play a sport, we don't get covered in the local news. Um, and the more I learn about events and activities and organizations, even, you know, government agencies that reach out and, and, and want to connect with us. I'm like, why is it, why isn't this happening? So that's why I created the site and any suggestions, any events, any news, anything that you have to share from your school, from your company, from your church, from the government agency where you work, if you're an event promoter, whatever, share that information with me if you're targeting the African diaspora, primarily in Palm Beach County, and I will I, I will definitely share it. You can send me an email to news at cocoawire.net, or you can go to the site and click on submit an event and do so there. There are some there are also some other things in there that could interest you, like the beauty of cocoa, where we celebrate who we are, how we look, what we do. There's Just So You Know, which is an opinion page of local community voices. I got to work on that a little bit. Um, uh, And then, you know, on the homepage, you know, news and information. So check it out, you guys. And I'm going to try not to keep talking about it, but it's really important to me 
because I know how rich our community is, and I and I want us to also know. So, thank y'all for tuning in, and I I'll try not to keep talking about Coco Wire. Y'all have a good Sunday. Thanks for tuning in.